polycythemia vera is a condition where the red blood cells grow without control. That utilizes the iron, and the PV patients become iron deficient. It is not wise, typically, to supplement the iron in patients with polycythemia vera because that would make red blood cells grow faster. Then you need more phlebotomy, or in case of a patient who is also on hydroxyurea, that would compromise the utility of site reductive therapy. Hydroxyurea would control the blood cell count in general in polycythemia vera patients by not allowing cells to grow too fast. It's a chemotherapy. It kills cells that grow, but it does not uh, do anything about the iron levels or improve the iron levels. Contrary to that, JAK inhibitors ruxolitinib has been shown to control the blood cell count and improves the symptoms related to disease as well as the iron levels in the body of the patient. So by unknown mechanism as of yet, the iron levels in patients on ruxolitinib improve to normal levels within three months, which would improve their cognitive ability or any other side effects from having a low iron. In that case, I'm quite surprised that the multiple benefits of uh, ruxolitinib are being discovered as we treat patients with polycythemia vera, beyond just control of the blood cell count. Symptoms, iron levels, it's an overall change in the management of polycythemia vera patients. Patients with high symptom burden in polycythemia vera represent about half of that population. Our group has been very engaged in trying to quantify the symptom burden in these patients whether it's fatigue, whether it's night sweats, itching, vascular symptoms, etc., This can be a very difficult uh, group uh, and very difficult to improve those symptoms. We're mindful that many of our, inner, our therapies in the past have some impact. Uh, control of phlebotomies uh, of the erythrocytosis helps to some degree improve some of those symptoms. Aspirin can sometimes help with some of those symptoms. Hydrea can sometimes help with some of those symptoms, but still many symptoms can remain, uh, and some symptoms there are times don't respond to these at all. The availability of ruxolitinib has really been very impactful for that symptomatic profile. In particular, symptoms that have not responded to uh, the other interventions, pruritus, fatigue, night sweats. In addition, it's helpful by its ability to control counts in patients that have failed hydroxyurea to control those symptoms such as headaches, erythromelagia, and others that are associated with high counts. The typical arc of patients with polycythemia vera who are well controlled on, on phlebotomy and aspirin alone is that they require several phlebotomies at the time of diagnosis and soon thereafter, but relatively quickly within a few months fall into a pattern of needing very intermittent phlebotomies, one every few months. Those that don't fall in that pattern and need continued phlebotomies are ones that we now then have on hydroxyurea. If they continue to be needing phlebotomies in that setting, we know that they don't tolerate it very well. Uh, and that's for several reasons. That can include uh, iron deficiency, uh, that can include difficulties on the veins and the hassle of needing to receive the phlebotomies. Indeed, iron deficiency helps to control erythrocytosis, but iron deficiency has its own symptomatic burden that comes with it. This has been well documented. We know from studies even in teenage girls that have iron deficiency for menstrual blood loss, they clearly have a variety of negative impacts from that iron deficiency. The difficulty with patients with polycythemia vera is that in the absence of proper cytoreductive therapy, we have really no way of correcting the iron deficiency. We take the phlebotomized patient and we give them iron, we're just gonna need to end up phlebotomizing them further.